Nintendo, one of the oldest companies in the games industry. And it is impressive they still are a considerable player in the market after so much time. There was a time the majority of people darked that their consoles were the peak of the industry. But as time goes on, new competitors started to appear. And as each console generation passed, their hardware could not keep up with the others. And on every turn they started to lose market. But it was in the sixth console generation that things got critical. Not only Nintendo suffered with a console that undersold. Nintendo's long-term competitor, Sega, also received a hit so hard with sales that they decided that the Dreamcast would be the last console made by them. This greatly affected Nintendo, and they had to change strategy, or just like Sega, admit defeat. The feeling of Nintendo's final days lasted until the seventh generation of video games came out. The Wii was Nintendo's turning point. The objective was for it not to compete directly with the other consoles of the time. They tried to achieve this by focusing a broader demographic. This was translated into a console where the majority of games was either party games or what I like to call family games. But one man decided that the Wii was capable to be much more than just a console to play when your younger cousins come to visit, or when your girlfriend wants to do something that you like. This man was Goichi Suda, or Suda51. You probably have heard of at least one of his works like Lollipop Chainsaw and Killer is Dead, but his greatest work was a series that unfortunately is still very underground because of the decision of being a Wii exclusive. In fact, the first game only was ported to PC and Nintendo Switch in 2021. Of course, I'm talking about No More Heroes. I know a lot of gamers out there don't have much patience. At least that's what Bishop the dude at the video store said. So I'm at the register, then I realize I got no money. I was seriously broke. Why? Because I met this smoking hot chick last night at the deathmatch bar. Man, she smelled good. So being the gentleman I am, I bought her a drink. Anywho, I decided to get a job. The gig? Assassinate the drifter. So I went where I was supposed to and waited for the guy to show up. And there he was, this cat, well-dressed, cool, couldn't tell if he was the shit or just plain all shit. Yeah, so he's styling, fast, aggressive, and packing heat. Bada bing. Or at least it was supposed to be. Until she showed up. Her name? Sylvia Crystal, an agent with this Watchamacallit Association. Congratulations. You are certified as the 11th best hitman. How about getting rid of the 10 killers above you, and aim for the top? I want to be number one. How's that? Short and simple enough for you? It's gonna be a long, hard road. But who knows? Could kick ass. Could be dangerous. Could totally suck. What do you say, bro? Join me. Let's see how far we can take this. And for you, they're holding the Wii remote right now. Just press the A button. Let the bloodshed begin. We play as Travis Touchdown, a 27-year-old who lives in the city of Santa Destroy. After a night of heavy drinking, he ended up getting involved with a mysterious woman that offered him a deal. Now involved with the United okay. Assassins Association. Travis is obligated to participate in the ranked matches now that he had taken the post of the number 10 assassin. The game starts with Travis going after Death Metal, the knife in rank. And right at the beginning, we are presented to the combat of the game, which is simple for a hack and slash. But this doesn't mean the fights are not fun, especially because of the finalizations. If you do it right, it can out F4 all enemies in the line of sight no matter how much HP they have, and also our laser sword will have to be recharged during the fights in a very practical way. <laughs> the dungeons in the game are fun, but very linear, with only some intersections with a hidden chest containing HP, batteries or a collectible. For the majority of them, I can't say much besides the design and appearance of enemies. Which in this case, we are in a massive mansion with luxurious architecture and crawling with two types of bodyguards. One uses melee weapons and the other is very straight to the point. 
Before almost every boss fight, we will find a different wrestler mask with a note of Travis Master that will make him remember some new fighting moves. We will also find a saving point. And yes, the game saves every time Travis takes a shit. This boss fight is excellent to present one of the main themes of the series. This competition is a constant torment for everyone involved, and the best thing you can do after getting into it is to await and hope for a good death and battle. This is precisely what Death Metal tries to tell Travis, who apparently just seems to ignore it. Hey, you know what paradise is, right? Paradise. This is paradise, the place where dreams are fulfilled. Well, you've had your dream, old man. Time to wake up! This is no paradise. All right, then what is it? A place to die. Huh. I'm glad you and I are on the same page here. So naive. You have no idea, do you? What a pity. You make an old man cry. But during the fight we can hear his thoughts about it. That he seems himself in the place of death metal in some years. An old man with every worldly desire at his disposition. But the only thing in his mind is his own death in the hands of some new rookie trying to go up in the ring. The boss itself is quite easy. To me the main challenge was to learn the commands. Every boss will have at least a second form where a new gimmick or movement will be added. In this one, he summons three clones to fight you. At the end of the fight we get another sample of Travis' thoughts about the whole situation. <laughs> Extraordinary. The moment I've been waiting for. The name Holy Sword is now yours. You're joking, right? I don't care about titles or power. I just want to be number one. Then master the ways of the assassin. Here's your ticket to paradise, old man. Then, the woman who got him into this appears. Nice kill, Travis. I didn't think you had it in you. It was rather... exciting. Congratulations. You are now ranked 10th. 10th, huh? What? Do I get anything? Hmm. How about some cash? That should help you pay the bills. I'm not feeling the sense of accomplishment that I should have. So I just gotta do this a few more times, right? If you so choose, yes. And you will keep your promise? Along the series we can see many references about animes, games and pop culture. Sylvia's design is a good example of this. Her looks remember me of Britney Spears, but the wiki don't refer this to it at all. So I could be wrong in this one. We also get a good notion of Travis' personality from this point on. Right after Sylvia tells him he's trapped into this competition. There is nothing the association cannot do. And if I refuse? As the 10th ranked assassin, you are now a target for those who want to replace you. Anytime, anywhere, number 11 could be right around the corner, ready to put a knife in your eye. So what you're telling me is that I gotta continue fighting. There's no way out of this. You set me up, bitch. Quit your bitching and get with the program. There's only one road out of here. No turning back. Okay, how about this? If I become number one, will you do it with me? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe not. Come on, just once. Yes, our boy is a major simp. But this is only one of the surprises. If you've been paying attention to his clothes, you probably already noticed this one. Boy. Travis is a weeaboo. In game, he would just be called an otaku. This term has a different meaning here in the West. It's used just to reference someone who likes anime. But in Japan, it's a very derogatory term, referencing someone obsessed with it, at the point of degrading his own life. I will talk about some features of the game. They are important, but they are not the main course. That would be the story and characters. If you want to just cut to the chase, go to this timestamp. One thing they try to do is to portray Travis as a loser. He lives in a motel room, alone, surrounded only by his obsessions. But to be honest, the atmosphere don't exactly pass this feeling. 
everything is well maintained and organized. The music is pleasant and we also have Gene. Travis Cat doing something goofy every now and then. My point is, he's doing better than most of us nowadays. In his room you can do many things, for example, you can change your clothes in the closet, change weapons in the drawer, check mission results in the map, and see points of interest. Save the game in the toilet, see cutscenes in the TV, restore each in the fridge, check your collectibles and cards, and most important, you can pet Gene. You can hang around the city of Santa Destroy using Travis motorbike. The city don't have many NPCs or cars, and it will give you a feeling of being more empty than Silent Hill if it was not for the music. The lack of NPCs is probably due to hardware limitations. Between the ranked battles you have to pay a fee of participation, this will obligate us to play side gigs and missions for the UAA. The thing is, you have to go many times into the job agency in the UAA building, because these are the only two places where you can start a side quest. And there is no fast travel. This makes a good portion of the game a repeated travel around the name of the city. I think this could be fixed by scattering the side gigs around the city, like Saints Row and GTA did. You can also buy new upgrades in Naomi's lab. In fact, I recommend you check her store after every ranked fight and buy all of her new weapons. It's equipped his daughter with ballistics too. How rude! You can also buy new clothes in Area 51, or go to the gym, where your master will ask you for things. There is also the bar where you can receive a new move every time you have collected at least 7 balls that are scattered around the city. I think this one is a reference to Dragon Ball. The side jobs are fun and you get a new one after every main target, but at the end of the game you have to do them many times if you want to get all of Naomi's upgrades, which I highly recommend. This repetition, however, will eventually get to you. Now that we are past the formalities, let's get into the story of the game. Right after getting out of the motor apartment, there will be a limousine waiting for us. In there, Sylvia gives us a briefing about our next target and also informs us about the entrance fee. You need to know. The ninth ranked assassin is currently Dr. Peace. A doctor? Actually, a detective. A dirty and unscrupulous detective with plenty of dark secrets about him. Illegal investigations, illicit sales, black marketing. He is your one-stop shop for marketing illegal goods. And on top of that, he is a trained assassin. You probably have noticed that her attitude is to constantly diminish Travis and his beliefs. I mean, the man's actions make it hard to defend him. You won't stand a chance against him. But there will be times that she will cross the line. Mostly in the second game. We will get there eventually. For 150,000 LB dollars. What? 150,000 LBs? Your entry fee? My overhead costs? Don't tell me that you were not expecting so many zeros on that price or that I am ripping you off or some shit. Dr. Peace. Listen to my the 9th ranked assassin will be at the stadium. The dungeon has baseball themed enemies, and will also introduce us to a baseball minigame that I have thought about cutting from the video because I don't want anyone seeing how much I suck at it. When we encounter Dr. Peace, he shows us that he really can sing. Thank you. Mighty kind. Mighty kind of you. Nice set of pipes you got there, old man. After some comic exchange, we see that his choice to pursue life as an assassin has greatly affected his personal relationships, especially with his daughter. We also can see that it reduced him to a state where the only thing that matters is the bloodshed. Unfortunately, the atmosphere was a facade. Not once did my own daughter look me in the eye. Oh, the food. Tasted like blood. You're a junkie for blood, old man. Sadly, I can't disagree. There's only one way to live. 
people like us, we're sharks attracted to blood. You smelled blood too, didn't you? Isn't that why you're here? You got it, old man. And for some reason, I feel this sense of euphoria. Don't die on me too quickly. I want to gorge myself on this sense of fulfillment till I vomit. Again, Travis shows us that he is going down the same path of his opponents. Your own kind. Nothing's more gratifying. See you on the other side. This is another easy fight, just focus on staying at his back and take some distance when he starts to charge a shot. The thing with most bosses of this game is that they have an easy move set, but take a long time to take down because of a great amount of HP. Next song I sing, I know my daughter will love. Won't you, darling? <laughs> Better practice my rap. <laughs> rap with me, Jennifer. <sighs> it's open mic night in hell, old man. Sing all you want down there. And there she is. After every fight, Lady Death's ready to take her reward. Congratulations. You are now ranked number nine. What do you expect? Wait a minute. Are you getting a little sentimental? Still green, aren't you? You know this is only the beginning. Call me when the next one's arranged. Game set! We receive a call giving us a new prize to fight the next ranked assassin and, well, also a call from the movie store asking for Travis to return their rentals. Hi, this is Diane from Beefhead Videos. This is a message from Mr. Travis Touchdown. Just calling to remind you that you haven't returned one of our rentals. Let's see here. It's um, titled Big German Jugs Collection Number 23. Be sure to return it soon. Have a nice day. And after paying the match fee, we also get an introductory call from Sylvia telling us about the next assassin. What's that in your hand? A toy? The 8th Assassin's Dungeon is a high school, and the enemies, I think they were supposed to be delinquents. But all of them look like a 30 year old bodybuilder. So it is your average high school student from every anime in the book. Some dungeons will have two stages. In the case of this one, it will be only the inside and outside of the building. Hey, he's over here! A rankings fight? Yeah, how about it? Alright. Will you give me a minute? Wait for me in the hallway. Right. Shinobu asks for the fight to be another place. While walking to the arena, Travis calls on her bullshit, but she just plays pragmatical and keeps on going. You killed them? Such a gentleman. Are you asking out of tactical curiosity? Or are you just fucking with me? After getting in the arena, she makes some claims that I don't appreciate, even though the wiki says she's 18. I just turned my back, but you didn't strike. You are fucking with me! Then, after looking at our weapon, she goes full weeaboo on us. Huh? You will pay with your life! At last I have my chance. I will now avenge my father! Something tells me you watch too many samurai movies, little girl. <laughs> 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 Sonic Sword! Holy! What the hell was that? Her fight is not easy. 
you have to play carefully and attack between her movesets. Be too aggressive or too passive and it will probably punish you for that. Just one more important thing, when she says Be very careful, she's one of the bosses with a near insta kill attack. Well, despite that, he decided not to kill Shinobu, you know, because he considers her to be too young to be killed, or maybe it was in respect of the memory of his master, even with Shinobu begging for death. Instead of misunderstanding, I never fought your father. Liar! You... you killed him! Sliced him in two, you sick... Whoa, whoa! Calm down a little. <laughs> Jacobs was my mentor. I'd never kill him. Liar! I watched Master Jacobs' teachings on video over and over till the fucking tape wore out. We've never met in person. Can guess what? Sylvia, don't act like a cold hearted bitch this time. Another victory, Travis. You are now ranked eighth. You gonna kill her? Probably not. She's still young. But I still have to follow the association's rules of conduct. Then let her live. Are we suddenly in love, Travis? Hell no. Then why take the risk of her coming back for revenge? In this business, there's no such thing as mercy. Maybe I said that too soon. And Travis reaffirms his beliefs. It's in this brief moment that I think his character will get most people. Until he starts simping again. Although, this time it seems not to be the case. Yeah, then I'll kill her. You are sick. So are you. Come and get some! <laughs> the seventh assassin's dungeon is one of the longest. First, we have to catch a train where there will be a gauntlet of enemies in each car. Then, we end up in what seems to be a construction site. It's actually a movie studio. Where we have to fight an even bigger gauntlet of enemies. The enemies in the train have a military theme. And the enemies at the movie studio have a... I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Maybe they are a parody of an actor. Faceless and with clothes that have no specific style. Ready to assume any shape when the time comes. Or maybe I'm just overthinking this. Let's just get to the boss. Oh. Oh, man. We enter in what appears to be a movie set where someone um, spilled spaghetti sauce all over the place. And in the middle of all this, there is this guy with a postman uniform informing us that this is what happens when a customer is not satisfied with his work. If it wasn't for the ominous sound effects that pop now and then, he would seem just like a weird, really buffed postman. Until he admits his number 7 in the rank. I take it you're Mr. 8? You? You're ranked? Not me. Well, actually it is me. Then, after this, Travis turned his back on the man just because he asked for some privacy. And obviously, he takes a cheap shot on him. Privacy? Privacy? Yes. I need to prepare. Whatever. Don't mind me. Pretend I'm not even here. I just need you to look the other way for a second. A second? Yes, just a split second. I don't think it's too much to ask. Do you? Then we can get on with our fight? That is correct. All right. Ah! Then he apologizes and gives a stereotypical comic book hero speech and offers a handshake in the name of sportsmanship. Guess what? Travis falls for it again. What? You want to shake hands? We're both fighters, aren't we? Not killers, at least for now. This is a sign of sportsmanship that we respect each other before and after the fight. Good luck. Likewise. Destroy Spark. Destroy means starts to lose it. 
<laughs> oh, this is great. Is this guy an idiot or what? <laughs> is this a joke? For some reason, he revives Travis and the rinket duo begins. And look at you. You look like you're dead. I guess it's time for a wake-up call. Destroy Cal! Destroy Team! This is where it gets good. Good night. Destroy Buster! That was quite a move. I'll admit you've got potential. If Challenge had a taste, you'd be quite delicious. This fight is really easy. Not only the attack animations take two years until he deals damage, he also shouts the name of every attack before landing it. I think this boss fight would gain much more if Destroy Man had less HP. An easy fight is not more enjoyable just because it takes a long time, it just gets boring. And to add to the list, in the middle of the fight he's lifted up and starts spamming the same attack. You have to run to the other side of the arena and make him hit the controls. Despite all that, I think the presentation of this character was good, and apparently, other people also fought this because he will appear again in the series. It took some time but I finally managed to defeat him. He starts begging for his life. And Travis once again hears his pleads, and once again is chip shotted. Ah! Don't cry like that. You're a killer, aren't you? <laughs> Help! What? Help! I can't hear you. Help me, please. What is this I hear from a seventh-ranked killer? Whatever. It's over anyway. Please, help me! There you go! <laughs> Poor Destroy Man. He's now only half the man he was before. Travis, I'm starting to think that you may be for real. You are now seventh in rank. Hey, when I hit number one, you better be looking your best. No need to pretty up. I want you to see me for who I really am. Serious? Damn! I don't understand why he got excited after she said that. But the scene is funny anyway. This next one starts with Sylvia putting Travis in her web. Holy summer. Still just a bunch. I like this scene, not only for the connotation, but because it shows how she easily manipulates him into continuating the ranked fights. Huh? Go any higher and I will kill you myself. Not until you become number one. We have a deal, remember? So hurry up and go get him! Yes, your highness. The sixth assassin's dungeon will start at the beach and is military themed. It is one of the shortest and thanks to it, the gimmicks don't feel so tiresome. You will have to go against gauntlets of enemies that are divided by barbed wires. Some of them will also include landmines, so do be careful. They also added a new type of enemy that uses the machine gun. AKA the most annoying enemy in the game. Holy Summers is a military veteran that lost a leg in a non specific war. At first, she seems pretty chill. And do a vibe check on Travis, who pays no mind to that. Do you like fighting? Yep. Do you like killing? Live for it. Do you like fear? Can't say. Never felt it. Do you accept death? Death? Never crossed my mind. Death is the only truth. You are still a mere butt. That's not a good thing, you know. Seeking meaning in everything? Especially killing. That's a bad habit among smart little girls these days. 
come closer and you will understand everything. I'm ready. Anywhere, anytime. Just your ordinary assassin. Such a disappointment. Are you in the mood yet? Normal assassins don't shoot the shit like this. They see their target and kill them. Then we are introduced to the main gimmick of this fight. Let's see you get out of this predicament. No problem. You'll see. Uh-huh. A bud that will never blossom. A sad truth. Good night, my sweet seven. Oh, crap! Nice trap. I like your style. Maybe I can steal a kiss before I steal your life. We'll see about that. Her melee attacks with a shovel are very easy to dodge. But this missile attack will be the bane of your existence. If the first one catches you, most probably you'll be stun locked, and the other ones will also hit you. Dodging this attack is weird. You can't be too close to her, but also not go too far. One strategy you could follow is to just fall in one of these holes on the ground on purpose. The only thing is that this game is from the 2000s, so be ready for a lot of button smashing. These holes on the ground are annoying, but they can be completely avoided if you just run through the water until you can reach her. A good moment to attack is when she rolls to tap a hole or after she fails to connect a shovel attack. But after this, keep your distance because the missile attack can catch you by surprise. Follow these steps and this fight will end really fast. Travis hesitates to kill Summers, but Hashi says an assassin must die when he loses a fight. This is not mercy. You can't kill a woman. Pathetic. If you can't kill a woman, you are less than a thug. You'll never make it to the top. <laughs> That's okay. I seem to have a thing for stupid, pathetic men like you. I can accept defeat if it comes from your hand. I will let you in on a secret. Assassins must die when they lose. I just think she did not need to roast us before... ...disconnecting from the server. <laughs> Wait! Number six! No! Forgive me, number six. I never meant to shame you. I find this short scene interesting. It shows that even though Travis do not agree with Summer's philosophy, he respects someone who follows their principles until the end. Before starting the next dungeon, I have noticed something strange. There is a big trail of marinara sauce all over the city. If you follow it, it will lead to this person at the entrance of the fifth assassin's dungeon. Some people should just stay away from the kitchen. Welcome to the worst dungeon in the game. It's literally just a big tunnel filled with the Stye Fighter pilot looking as enemies, aka the most annoying enemies in the game. You just have to pursue this mysterious figure until the end of the tunnel. After getting there, the whole scene just cuts to this road in the middle of nowhere. Which makes no sense, but okay, let's keep going. We find the next contestant, and he is... Cress, to say the least. Your rumbling is excellent. I think I'm going to lose the bowel control. He apparently has this weird robo-brain as his partner. And after some cultural exchange, he starts charging up an attack that just goes on and on. Three, two, one. But when the big attack is ready to be triggered, this guy appears out of nowhere and presents himself as Henry. This is getting interesting. What do you go by? Henry. Henry? <laughs> Your instincts serve you well. I. Am... I don't know who you are or what you want, Sir Henry. Where are your manners? 
That was my kill, you naughty boy! Shall we get this over with? And don't hate me if I play a tad dirty. Fine by me. After you. Unfortunately, Sylvia gets in and impedes the fight from happening. And Travis is just as pissed as I am. According to the rules of conduct, it is your win. That's fucked up! That's the stupidest rule I've ever heard! This guy's mine, and you just want me to let him go, bitch! But Sylvia has none of it, which gives enough time for Henry to escape. You can't have what you can't have. Whatever. But this dude says he wants to fight and ain't nobody gonna stop him. This ass clown right here is... Who? Hey! He's gone! Mr. Sir Henry motherfucker, he just jetted! What a pussy. Sorry, save that aggression for your next match. Who the hell was that guy? And, by her reaction, we see that she knows something about who he is. Let's see what you're made of, country boy! Travis, the next rank is fourth. Who is it? But come to think of it, it doesn't really matter, does it? I am sending you a ticket for a show. Look nice. Let's go together. Number four will be there. A show? Wait, this is a date, right? Something like that. Why else would I be getting an oil rub? Wh what? What did you say? Someone's rubbing you down? I'll see you later. Now motivated, Travis follows through the 4th Assassin's Dungeon. We are again in the train station, but this time there are so many enemies around. After making our way into the train, Travis instantly enters sleep mode. God, I wish I could fall asleep like this. I think this would be the shortest one in the game if it was not for this minigame part that comes out of nowhere. It would be great if it was not by one factor. I'm just... Uh, what is going on? What are these inverted controls? Getting at his date, Travis encounters Sylvia at the entrance of what seems to be a theater. And she's acting completely different from all the other times we encounter her. This is one of my favorite presentations of the game, and I will just let it play it out. I don't know if I can make justice to the level of absurdity of this one. You are late, Anson. Hurry, the show's about to start. What's with all the excitement? It is not every day you get to watch a big fight from VIP seats. Of course I am excited, but I am most excited being with you. Whoa, you're serious. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Oh shit, oh shit. I'm packing heat, baby. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen and all killers out there. Welcome to Harvey Bovodarsky's Magic Freak Show of the Century! It'll be a killer night, so let's get started! It's showtime! Ha-ha! Oh my! Quiet, quiet, please! What do you know? It's already time for the last program! But you know, today is a special day, and you, ladies and gentlemen, are lucky. So lucky that you might even get lucky. Now, one of you lucky people will be chosen to be up here with me. Who's it gonna be? The lucky person is... You! Well, Travis, this is your lucky night. Me? They want me? Serious? You gotta be kidding. Go get him, tiger. Come on, no need to be shy. Congratulations, you nasty little boy. Tell the audience your name. Travis Touchdown. It's a good name, don't you think? It's a fine name indeed. You have your parents to thank for that. My parents are dead. Oops, touchy subject. A question that should not be touched upon. That's okay. Really, it is. 
dear, dear, don't let it bother you. Hold on to your hopes and don't give up, my nasty little boy. Thanks. I'll remember that. So you came to enjoy the show? Damn right I did. I was really looking forward to this. It's the last show, right? Last show? Did I hear you right? Oh, you heard me right. Harvey, you're gonna die tonight. Right here, by my hand. Let's close the curtains. I hope you aren't being serious. That would be a pity. We still have the main event to unveil. Playtime is over. Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! On to the grand finale! Now this is entertainment! Harvey's boss fight is really easy, but this presentation made it one of the most memorable of the game. In fact, the whole fight is also very fun, not only for Harvey's moveset, but because the whole magic show continues during it. I got to be honest, I was smiling like a kid while playing this the whole time. But the ending gets very green for no reason. It's dark! Somebody turn on the lights! I can't see shit! Oh, how am I supposed to perform in total darkness? Hit the lights! Hurry up! I can't see! It's dark! I'm surrounded by darkness! At least Travis gets a taste of what he was looking for. Knowing Suda's work and considering its name, I think the third assassin was made for busting speedruns. Even if it's not true, this is now my head cannon. This dungeon starts at a bus garage. The enemies are Yakuza themed and apparently we are going on a trip. This second part can be very hard if you are not buying the upgrades at Naomi's lab. Specifically, the ones that gives you more battery time for the sword. Because we will be on a small arena with a constant flow of enemies at both sides of the bus. Getting there, Travis sees that someone is being attacked, and it turns out to be his master. The one from the gym, not Shinobu's father. This guy has too many masters. He's been shot many times by a massive laser, barely holding up until he is distracted by a cat. The laser is shot at him one more time. Travis offers to help, but his master don't want anyone to interfere, despite the fact that he's losing and this fight is very unfair. I mean, the man is using a sword. He's not even trying to dodge the laser. Outgunning, outsmarted. They never learn, no matter how old they get. We finally get to see who's been shooting the laser. Number 3 is an old, body positive lady that disguises her massive weapon as a shopping cart. Yeah, I am. Okay, there. It's complete. That's right. Don't you see? Idiots. All men are. Why should I even bother killing you? Even if you had nine lives, it wouldn't be enough. Oh, oh, I just love losers who don't care for their own lives. This fight is basically running through hiding spots until we can get to the end of the arena. Sometimes there will be enemies in the hiding spots, but they are no challenge. This fight is only difficult if you are one of those people who likes to risk. 
Just remember that the closer you get, the laser also gets faster, obligating you to adopt a slower pace. This is another motive, I believe Suda51 did this boss just to make fun of speedrunners. Getting there, Travis destroys the weapon before ending speedbuster. Pretty good boy. Damn right, I'm an apprentice of the master. Thunder Liu, he was a good man and I hope one day you'll be as good as he was. Count on it. A little present for you. Farewell. And good night. With Travis's master death, we now get his sword. If you give it to Naomi, the last unlockable sword will be available to be bought. This scene seems unnecessary, but I decided to put it in the video. This is the last time. Travis sees Sylvia in this game. Only two more to go. It is really cool how they all die. The next scene we are surprised by a carrier pigeon with a curious choice of sound design. What the? A letter? What do we got here? Don't come looking for me, Sylvia Crystal. Some trouble at home? She quit her job? Huh. What the hell is this all about? The rank two match will be at Destroy Stadium. Aren't I a hard working girl? Huh. Not the baseball stadium again. Okay, Sylvia. Only two more to go. I'm going all the way. That's a promise. As you have seen this cutscene, the next fight will be at the stadium, but this time it's a little different from the last. Instead of fighting enemies by foot, Travis will be using the motorbike on this one. It is possible to fall from it if you get hit. I recommend restarting the dungeon if this happens. I tried to just soldier through when this happened to me, and the dungeon lasted way longer than it should have. Getting to the underground of the stadium, we encounter this scene. Now, for obvious motives, I can't say what she is, but I think the game does a great job of the ambient storytelling. So it's all very on the nose. I thought Bad Girl voice actress was the same of Harley Quinn, because these characters have some similarities in appearance and fighting style. Ah, uh, damn that smooth. I feel alive again. Want a drink? I'll pass. She's clearly unhappy with her whole situation. Pop quiz. Why am I such an angry bitch? Seriously, no matter how many I kill, it's all the same. They're all going to pay. Yeah, with their fucking lives. You get very bad offended girl. when Travis tries to mock her. You have no right to look at me like that. It's just a job. The daily grind. You're no assassin. You're just a perverted killing maniac. In essence, they're the same. Don't go on thinking you're better than me. You think you're hot shit. Who the fuck do you Bad think Girl you has are? a nice dungeon that is from the repetitive Come design on. of the others. She has a nice soundtrack, a nice character design, a nice entrance, and a nice voice acting. With that said, to me, she has the worst boss fight in the game. I will explain why after the overview of the fight. Your best option here is to let her get close to you and start a combo. Don't try to defend it, her last attack of every combo can break your defense and gives a crazy amount of damage. So you can try to dodge at the last moment and get a dark step dodge. But it is risky. Like all the other bosses, you can only damage her after she finishes attacking. But against Bad Girl, you usually only hit her 2 or 3 times before the shields back up. Just by this, you can see one of the two motives I dislike this fight. It takes too long. To the majority of players, this boss fight takes more than 10 minutes. And like I said before, a boss fight don't get better just because it takes a long time to finish. But it gets even worse if you consider that she gives you a great amount of damage. 
And in her second phase, she starts doing an attack that's a guarantee insta kill, meaning that you can lose over 10 minutes of fight, even if you play it carefully because you did one mistake. This attack is not telegraphed. She can do it anytime and is triggered by approaching her, meaning that if you play too aggressively, you will be punished, making a fight that is already too long even longer. Speaking of which, if you play too safe, she will start spamming an attack where she will start throwing her partners at you, where she will be completely invulnerable the whole time. You can try to throw them back or execute one of them close to her. This will not only hurt, it will also cancel the whole move. Every time I think about replaying this game, I start to reconsider when I remember this fight exists. Even after Immortal Wound, Bad Girl keeps swinging her bat and almost disconnects Travis from the server. Need spankings. Maybe you forgot. I'm a bad girl. Lose. I will never lose. I give up. You win. Yes, I've won. <laughs> As expected, Sylvia is nowhere to be seen this time. And also, I noticed this pit in the arena, changing it from a normal to morbid. The smell in this place must be really awful. On behalf of Sylvia Crystal, I am here to tell you that you are now officially ranked second. Thanks. That was a close one. Almost didn't make it. It was a fine fight, sir. Shit, that was close. This time Travis tries to call Sylvia, but her mother is the one who picks it up. She exposes Sylvia as a con artist who focuses on tricking assassins, a confusing and dangerous profit plan. But it's not more confusing the justification her mother gives us to go after number one. Another sorry kid. And for the record, I am Sylvia's mother. Mother? Yes, you heard me. And there's no such thing as an association, or whatever you think exists. You're joking, right? Do you know how many people I've killed? She is a professional con artist. You mean a fraud? Are you telling me this was all just bullshit? She set everything up. Would you mind telling me how far this all went? I'm now second in rank. So, just one more to go. All right. Why not play along since you've come this far? Are you serious? What's the point? This is all some make-believe charade. But a good man finishes what he started. Fight to the end. Your most formidable opponent awaits in the castle. Now, off to the Garden of Madness. Right after getting out of the motor apartment, we see someone stealing Travis' bike. At this point, I think the game did this just to make a fool of us. This dungeon will be basically a motorbike stage, that is a very nice idea. Followed by a haunted forest filled with the most annoying enemies in the game. I recommend ignoring these guys, and running to the direction the Ghost of Sensei points to. First looking at this arena, I was expecting the Nameless King to show up. But instead, we get some Star Wars jokes mixed with some jokes about twists in the ending of the story. Welcome to my castle. I heartily receive you, my son. All right, enough with the jokes. A joke? You don't remember me, Travis. I am your true father. Blood does not make such mistakes. Number one starts to show off and Travis gets ready for the fight until this happens. I fell to my feet right before my son's eyes. Do you not remember this? In my deepest memories, I hear someone calling. I remember. It was a hot summer day. There was someone standing behind my father and mother. That person killed my parents. The face, I can't make it out. Who are you? Remember. Who are you? 
try harder. I think I can see it. Almost. Do you recognize this? Now I remember everything. Well done, son. She was the girl you loved. The mysterious girl from his memory appears. It turns out she's the actual top rank. And again, we get another twist. Travis reveals she was her name's Jean. Just like the cats. In fact, he gave his cats this name because of this woman. Who was his childhood crush. And also his stepsister. Yeah man, Travis is visiting a certain site way too much. Now I get it. All those fights. It was for this. I lost everything that I ever cared about. That bitch took everything. I can help you to get even. She's a good con artist, that's for sure. She reveals her backstory, but the game fast forwards it so the age rating don't get affected. And oh boy, they were right on this one. I will show it how it is in the game, and then leave it at a normal pacing, so you can understand what she's saying. You're welcome. Trivial questions will be answered in the afterlife. Answer me! It's impossible. Impossible? What do you mean? It's too terrible. It alone would jack up the age rating of this game even further. So what? Who cares? What if the game gets delayed? You don't want this to become No More Heroes Forever, do you? All right. I'll fast forward this so you can tell me. Okay. I'll make it short and quick. <laughs> You are my half-brother. You know that manga called Miyuki? The Japanese one? Well, it's like that. Your father abandoned my mother to run off with your mother. It broke her heart beyond repair. She killed herself. Knowing I had nowhere to go, he took advantage of me. Ever since I can remember, he molested me. We lived in this rotten apartment, and I was his slave. Every day I cursed his soul. I swore that I would kill him one day, but cursing didn't change anything. That's when I decided to become a killer. With no money to pay for training, I paid with my body. But to you, <laughs> I bet that son of a bitch looked like a hard-working family man. That was all an act. He didn't give two shits about cleaning up my life, so I decided to clean it up myself. That's why I do what I do, and I got what I wanted, killing him in front of your very eyes. The fight begins, and I gotta say, this is one of the best, if not the best boss fight in the game. Jin is very fast, does a big amount of damage, and is extremely aggressive. I'm a suspect to talk about this. I really like this style of boss fight. Fast paced, and with small windows to attack. Also, unlike the other bosses, the game don't just give her an impenetrable shield and call it a day. They added a dodging animation that I really like. As the fight goes on, the arena gets smaller and Jin gets faster. But to be honest, it made no difference to me, as I was playing this one hyper aggressively. When Jin finally got the upper hand, Shinobu appears out of nowhere and saves Travis. Out of nowhere? Again? Do it! Right. Brother, please don't kill me. Sorry, Jean. This hurts me too. We're both in the same business, after all. And I've... had enough. Time for you to rest, Jean. Good night, Travis. I hope your next dream is a more pleasant one. It's over. This is where it all ends. Right, Sylvia? And Sylvia was also watching all along. And here we are, the end of the game. Travis learns the hard way that he will always be hunted by someone else. Can a guy get some privacy? At least when he's taking a dump? I'm afraid not. These fights don't work like that. It's time to die, Mr. First Rank.
Yeah, of course, it would not end like that. This game actually has a secret ending that can only be unlocked if you bought our weapons in Naomi's lab. Will you hurry up with that? I'll be outside. That was close. Thanks. Ugh. You're a disgrace to yourself and all those you've killed. Huh. There are four in total. And if you choose to watch the normal ending, you will have to replay the whole game to see the other one. If you remember well, the Henry plot was not resolved yet. And we will now have some answers about who this guy is in the true final fight of the game. I think this one is the best fight of the game. It also is fast paced and kind of difficult. I like Jin, but this boss has been built up for a long time. And it also has every positive point for her fight. Including some revelations. A lot of revelations. Ugh, damn it! Is that all you got, Travis? Don't make me laugh. Mind if I ask you something? Sure. Why the hell do you call me Travis? Travis, like you're my friend or something. Who the fuck do you think you are? You can't be serious. All this time you didn't realize. What are you talking about? I'm your twin brother. What the hell? That is the craziest shit I've ever heard. Why would you bring up something like that at the very last minute of the game? I would have thought you and the would have at least expected a twist of fate of some kind. Yeah, this one was why I did not talk about his moveset. I think they were clearly trying to do a parody of brother rival dynamic from Devil May Cry. From the clothes and hairstyles to Henry moveset, who have some moves that resemble some of Virgil's special attacks. What? And hey, where's Sylvia anyway? She disappeared without a trace. Where the hell is she? You mean my wife? What? Wife? Yes, you know. Spouse, soulmate, Henry's wife. Get the idea? When did you two get married? Oh, about 10 years ago. Yeah, that's right. Because we were both in college at the time. Well, Travis was kicking his brother all along. And not to be that guy, this college thing is funny, but makes no sense. It is why I don't trust the agents in the wiki. It says that Shinobu is 18, but she looks like a girl that has not gone through puberty yet. Henry is 27 and Sylvia is 24. 10 years before this, they probably were in high school, not in college, unless they are both genius. But it do not seem to be the case for neither of them. Henry explains the whole situation, that Sylvia likes to spend a lot and his income is not enough. Travis red pills Henry. Oh shit! All news to me! I'm gonna need shock treatment to get over this one! I'm sorry for all the trouble my wife has caused you. Forgive her. She caused me some trouble alright, but it helped me clear up a lot of things. Ah, you know how women are. Especially my wife. A really big spender. Yeah, she knew my income wasn't enough, so every now and then she'd just disappear. She's a bad wife, but a good woman. What? Are you telling me that you and her... Oh, come on! <laughs> but Travis, my brother, we're similar in many ways. <laughs> and then, they start debating on how to end the game. Quit. Let me ask you, how do you plan to put an end to all of this? Wait a sec, you want me to tie up all these loose ends? I don't think so. You're the protagonist. I'm just a cool, handsome foil who happens to be your twin brother. Hate to say it, but it's your job. I want to bail, but where the hell's the exit? Oh. There's no way out, is there? <laughs> no getting out, right, bro? That's right. All we can do is keep running. Then let's find that exit they call paradise. Let's go! After the credits, we also get a nice scene with a child looking at this painting named Museum. Until Sylvia appears and reveals to us that this girl is a daughter of one of the two. Well, at least that was the impression in 2007. Nowadays, we know that Jean is Travis' daughter. I want to use this part to rumble a little. As you know, this is the first game of the series, 
and has every first iteration. It is what defines the characteristics and personality of all the others to come. It is unique, but it was too too confused on what it wants to be. It has some flaws, like any other game, but it is completely playable to this day. What a game this was. My plan was to make a video about the whole series in the same format, but it started to take a very long time to be made. I will eventually do the review of the other games and put together this giant video. But before that, there are at least two other projects that I want to finish. As always, consider liking and subscribing. Stay tuned, there will be more to come soon.